I love Honda. It's my favorite Japanese automaker and one of my favorite automakers full stop. And I loved Honda's first EV, the Retro Quirky E, which I, like many others, thought was going to be a big hit based on its design and the fact that it was a Honda. Even in spite of the high price and the limited range, I really wanted it to succeed. The manufacturer expected to sell 1000 E's per year in Japan and 10,000 E's in Europe, but it never came close to that. It was introduced in 2020 under the applause of the world's automotive journalists, who praised its design and its fun handling. However, late last year Honda announced that the model was being discontinued, which means it was in production for three and a bit years. I was disappointed, but I wasn't surprised. Now, after the failed E, Honda is trying again with the ENY1, which is certainly better than the E in many respects, but I don't think it's good enough to compete with the best electric crossovers that are currently on the market. In terms of the way it looks, I think Honda went from one extreme to the other. The E looked really unusual and it turned heads, and its design alone was enough to make people love it. Whereas this, the ENY1, well, it just looks like an HRV with a closed off grille and some charging things here. Honda will be quick to contradict me when I say that this is an electric HRV, pointing to its all-new electric vehicle platform, which it plans to underpin 30 EVs with. It supports front, rear and all-wheel drive, but the ENY1 is only available with one motor, which drives the front wheels. So I'm not sure if this shared body between the HRV and the ENY1 is proof of Honda cost cutting so that it doesn't have to design an entirely new body for its EV that it doesn't really believe in too much, or if it actually wants people to confuse this with an HRV. My name is Andre, you're watching One Tire Fire, and I'm going to tell you all there is to know about the Honda ENY1 and whether or not you should buy one. You can tell the ENY1 is electric by the battery pack hanging underneath it. This reduces its ground clearance from 17.5 centimeters in the regular HRV to 13.5 centimeters. So even though it might look quite tall and crossoverish, you're probably going to scrape the battery pack on some higher speed bumps or something. There is some plastic around it to protect it, so that's good, but it just looks weird. I've never seen an EV like this. You would think that by having such a long hood, this car is going to have a massive frunk. Well, let's see. Nope, it does not. You can charge the ENY1's 68.8 kilowatt hour battery pack with a usable capacity of 61.9 kilowatts from 10 to 80 percent in just 45 minutes. This car's maximum charging speed is 78 kilowatts. If you charge it via an AC charger, its peak charging speed is 11 kilowatts, bringing it from 10 to 80 percent will take around six hours. A DC fast charger can also add 100 kilometers or around 60 miles of range in just 11 minutes. Just like on the Honda E, you have a really big lid that opens when you want to charge it, but it's no longer on the hood, it is here in the grill. You press the button to open it, and voila, CCS. You can tell this is an ENY1 and not an HRV by the obvious badge here. If you open the trunk, in my well specced advanced tester, it opens on its own and it reveals 361 liters of load volume, which you can extend to 1150-ish or so by folding down the rear seats, which is pretty straightforward. You open the rear door via this handle hidden in the C-pillar, and it reveals a reasonably wide opening and a lot of space. I am 183 centimeters tall or six foot tall, and I fit perfectly in the back of this. I really can't fault the space back here. And I like that the backrest is reclined so you have a very comfy position for a long journey. You also get cup holders in the doors, which isn't so common in the back, although you don't get any kind of um, storage in the door, in the lower part of the door. Two air vents here in the center, you can control the flow, two USB-C's for charging over there. And since this is the advanced model, you get a double panoramic roof, however for the rear, there is no cover that you can pull. Instead, you have to go in the trunk and fit a separate cover that clips into these uh, plastic thingies here. Not the most elegant solution, if you ask me, but it is nice to have this. It certainly makes the interior quite nice and airy. One thing I noticed that doesn't scream high quality is the center armrest in the back. It just falls like that. No damping whatsoever. Although the materials themselves, they're okay, although it's, it's hard plastic here on all of the surfaces, but I don't have a problem with it. But even though the ENY1's exterior is mostly HRV, 
The interior, especially the dashboard area and the screens and whatnot, they're completely different and better. Let me show you. What you notice first is that the dashboard, as I said, is completely different from the one in the HRV, which looks like the one in the Civic and the CRV and pretty much any other Honda. So at least even though the exterior is very, very similar to an HRV, the interior isn't. Oh, and Honda also changed its logo. It's now white on a black background. Let's start it up. The screen in front of the driver is a 10.2 inch display. It shows you everything. It's clear. It's simple. There's no fuss. And here in the center, we have this big guy, which is a 15.1 inch screen that is split into three tiers. Here you have your navigation or your wireless Apple CarPlay. Android Auto needs a cable, by the way, in this car. Then here you can change the screen. So for instance, you can have this power flow thing, which tells you all you need to know about the state of charge and your range. There's also an EV menu where you can schedule charging, set charging limits, and precondition your battery for charging. You also have a trip computer, which shows you trip computery stuff. One thing that is a bit confusing, I will say, is that you have two back buttons. So at a glance, you may not know which one you should press. Although this probably becomes easier the more you live with the car. On the lowest part of the screen, you have this climate panel, which works quite well. And it's always there. Below the screen, you have a wireless phone charger, a 12 volt, as well as a USB-A and a USB-C. And it looks like only the old style USB is a data connection. Moving further back, you have the now familiar but still quirky Honda selector buttons for the transmission. Then you have this glossy plastic, which in 5,000 kilometers has acquired quite a lot of scratches. I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's, it's really bad. I don't know why automakers keep doing this. Behind that you have your drive mode selector, these very deep cup holders, you have the electric parking brake and the brake hold function and then this is for the self parking function. The armrest isn't very deep but you can store your keys in there. The armrest itself is nicely padded. I think it's time to take the vehicle for a drive now. From the driver's seat, the ENY1 looks nothing like the HRV, and that certainly helps it feel a bit more distinctive, something which I can't say about the exterior. The driver's seat is electric in my tester, but it doesn't go far enough down, and you feel like you're sitting very high in this car. And I don't think it's an issue of the battery eating into cabin space and requiring the seats to be higher, because as you saw, the battery hangs very, very low. And this is quite unusual for a Honda, but I've been struggling to find the perfect driving position because I would have liked the steering wheel to come a bit closer to me. Right now, I feel that my knees are a bit too bent for comfort. The seat itself is perfectly fine. All modern Honda seats are excellent and the vegan leather upholstery is pretty good. It doesn't feel low quality. Unlike in the rear where the door cards are hard all the way from the top to the bottom, here, the top part is soft. This driving position is funny. It really makes you feel like you're driving an SUV, even though this is a crossover at most. The suspension is very soft and the car doesn't give you that much confidence to push it. Setting off from a standstill, this car really scrabbles for grip. and the traction control light flashes frantically to alert you about it. With 204 PS and 310 Newton meters of torque, this car feels quite sprightly and it pulls very keenly all the way to its limited top speed of 160 km per hour. The claimed acceleration time to 100 km per hour of 7.6 seconds is more than respectable and it really makes this car feel swift. I will note though that the electric motor that's somewhere in the front of the vehicle is actually quite loud and if you drive it with your climate control off, which you probably are going to do in this car, we'll get to that in a second, but if you drive it with the fan off and no music, as I am now, the whining might become a bit annoying.
comfort levels in the ENY1 are pretty good. It's definitely more comfortable than the HRV. You can check out my review of that car. I left a link in the description. And it's probably helped by the fact that it's around 300 kilos heavier. So the HRV weighs about 1.4 tons, and this is a bit over 1.7 tons, which is pretty light for an EV. So between the extra weight and the soft suspension, plus these really, really nice and very comfy seats, make the ENY1 a very, very comfortable place to, to spend time and to drive around in. This car's regenerative braking is one of the weakest I've ever experienced in an EV. In its default setting, there's hardly any regen. So I'm lifting off, the car is barely slowing down. But even if I put it in full regen, which is these three chevrons here, the deceleration isn't that much better. And it doesn't stay in this setting for long. It'll go away after a while. It will revert to the default, I mean. And it isn't one of those clever systems that adjusts the regen depending on what's in front of you. The ENY1 can travel a claimed 412 kilometers according to the WLTP test cycle. When I picked the car up from Honda, it showed that I could do just under 300, but if I didn't use any of the climate functions, so I turned everything off, that gave me an extra 40 kilometers of range. The reason for this is simple. The ENY1 doesn't have a heat pump which is something you want to have in an EV because it uses up all of the car's residual heat to um, heat up the cabin or it doesn't let it go to waste. So for instance, heat from the motor. In a car with a heat pump, that would be pumped into the cabin. It's not enough to heat the cabin all on its own, but if this car had a heat pump, it certainly wouldn't lose 40 kilometers if you wanted the fan on. So with 54% left in the battery, the car is telling me that I can do 162 kilometers, which is okay. If I turn the fan on, it drops to 137. Thankfully, conditions these days have been quite mild, so I didn't have to have the fan on and the heating on, and I just relied on the heated steering wheel and the heated seat. So I'm not really sure how close you can come to the 412 claimed kilometers that you can do in this car. On this current drive, as this power flow trip computer thingy is telling me right now, I've been averaging 20 kilowatts per 100 kilometers, and I've not been driving the car quickly because this isn't the kind of car that edges you on to drive quicker. In fact, even though it has selectable driving modes, I've only ever put it in sport once. And then I've taken it out of sport because I didn't see the point of it. In fact, now I'm in normal and I'm going to put it in economy mode. Cruising on the highway at below the speed limit, which is what you do in an EV. So the speed limit is 130 and we're doing 120. The car does most of the driving for you, thanks to all of the systems that are part of Honda Sensing. So it comes as standard on all ENY1s, and it gets front collision mitigation, lane departure warning, road departure mitigation, cross traffic monitor for both front and rear, and adaptive cruise control with a low speed follow function. My advanced tester also has Honda Parking Pilot and a multi-view camera system which allows you to see what's around you at low speeds. It even has one of those very handy top-down perspectives. And the cameras are very high resolution. It's an okay system. It's not the best on the market, but it's, it's adequate. In Romania, you can only get the ENY1 as a very well-specced advanced model. That gives you the heated steering wheel, the double panel roofs, the electric tailgate, and the electric driver's seat. In some markets, like the UK, you can get a slightly cheaper elegance model, which does without the features that I just mentioned, but it isn't significantly less expensive. But here, for 51,500 euros, I don't think this car is worth the money when cheaper competitors do more. So this doesn't have a heat pump, it doesn't have bi-directional charging, you can't get it as a dual motor all-wheel drive, there's only one battery pack option, and there's just no incentive to buy this over a, a Hyundai Ioniq 5, which I think is one of the best, or the ubiquitous Tesla Model Y, the world's best-selling vehicle. I was frankly expecting more from Honda, and I would have assumed that they learned some lessons from the failed E, but apparently they haven't, or they already had this model in the pipeline, and they released it knowing full well that it's not going to do very well. They must do market research. They must know what their competitors are doing. And the ENY1 just isn't good enough. I haven't lost hope in Honda's electric endeavors though. And this platform is certainly pleasant. 
the ENY one is a nice car to drive, but it just doesn't feel especially well tuned or it's like they they could have made it a bit better with the ingredients that they had, but they just stopped eight tenths of the way. Honda has shown some really, really cool concepts lately, especially one that looks like a dust buster, you know, one of those handheld uh, vacuum cleaners. And I hope that that materializes into a production car because that's what Honda needs. It needs bold design that no other manufacturer would even dare try, but only Honda could pull off. And it needs to be underpinned by competitive technology. So even though the ENY1 is a disappointment for me, I still hope that Honda can and will do better, at least in terms of electric vehicles, because I can't wait to drive the Civic Type R. That's it for this car. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.